introduction. Uh, my name is Mario Garcia. Those are my Twitter and GitHub accounts. I'm currently working for a Spanish company called Kaleidos. And I'm a, I'm a proud member of the Madrid Groovy User Group. Okay, so um, why I'm doing this talk? Well, this talk was born uh, because I wanted to share my experience uh, trying to figure out how to use GraphQL uh, with Ratpack. So I'm going to explain a little bit how I did it. So uh, the agenda today, um, what I'm going to be talking about is, uh, first of all, a little bit of GraphQL uh, theory, just a brief introduction. Uh, then I will be uh, doing a very simple uh, example with Ruby and GraphQL, just to know how to start playing with it. Then, of course, I will show you how to uh, integrate uh, a GraphQL engine with Wrathpack. Uh, in the end, uh, I will do a um, recap of the main or the most important things that I've uh, been uh, discussing during the presentation. Okay, so first of all, a little bit of uh, GraphQL theory. What is GraphQL? Well, uh, for me, there are two main ideas that are very important when you're trying to understand what is GraphQL. First of all, is that is a query language. Um, if you think of a SQL, SQL is a query language. It enables us to query data from a given data store, most of the time relational databases. GraphQL must be uh, thought the same way. It's a query language, regardless the transpolated that we are exposing it. Um, apart from that, it uses a type system to define those queries. Following the analogy of the SQL, in SQL we have databases and tables, kind of a structure of our data. GraphQL is the same. It uses a given syntax to define data types and define queries that are going to retrieve data from data structure. Uh, but the same way it's important to know what is GraphQL, it's important to highlight what is not. Uh, it's not a web framework. I mean, um, what I try to mean by that is that it doesn't have to do with HTTP necessarily. Although most of the time we will be using it, exposing the GraphQL schema through an HTTP endpoint, we could be using GraphQL in many other ways. Uh, on top of many other uh, transport layers. Uh, and definitely it's important to um, highlight the fact that uh, GraphQL is not REST. This is important because uh, when you begin to start playing with GraphQL, there are many things that we have learned with REST that we want to translate to GraphQL. And some of them may work, but some of them won't. So how do we start playing with GraphQL? Well, there are very few steps that uh, you must follow in order to execute your first GraphQL query. First of all is define the, the data types, the structure of your data. Once you have defined your data, then you, you will be defining the, the query types, how to retrieve the data from that structure and the um, underlining data store. Then you will define the schema, which is a higher level in that structure hierarchy. And finally, you will be able to execute the queries you have defined against the schema you have defined. Uh, an example of this is, uh, well, here we have uh, like a, a GraphQL um, data types. We have two of them, contestant and raffle. Uh, those are two types that have several fields, each of them. Okay, um, so that way we will be defining some types. Then we have to define the queries. As you uh, may have noticed, um, a query is just another type, okay, that have fields. Those fields are all the possible queries that you can do in your, using your schema over the defined types. Queries can use all the types of scholars. In this particular example, 
we see that we are using raffle and contestant, which are two data types that we have already defined. And scholars such as a string or integer, which are um, primitive types, so to speak. Uh, queries may also have arguments. In this case, the get winners query has an argument called raffle ID, which is a type of string, and it has an exclamation mark, and we will see what does it means in a moment. Okay, so we have defined the data types, we have defined the queries, then we have to define the schema. The, the schema is basically another type, special type, uh, where you define which is a type for the queries and which is a type for the mutations. Mutations are all those queries, quote, uh, that modify data. There are um, some rules uh, when executing mutations that you, you have to be aware of. Uh, one important is that mutations are executed um, one after another, uh, whereas when you are executing queries, uh, you can execute all of them in parallel. Okay, so the last step is just executing the query. So uh, let's say we have a query called list, uh, and we are uh, asking, give me the ID and the title of all the raffles. We have defined uh, a query called list that re returns all the raffles in the data store. We don't know which type of data store we are using, but we want to uh, uh, retrieve only the ID and the title of those raffles. So the query will, will look like this. And the result will be like the one below. Uh, we will be receiving the data from the, uh, the server, and for the list query, the result will be a list of raffles, uh, only getting the ID and the title of each one of them. Okay, one comment on validation. Um, remember there was an exclamation mark on the uh, winner's uh, query? Well, that means that that argument is mandatory, so that if we uh, try to write a query like the one below, we will get an invalidation error. Okay, so enough theory for now, and, but before showing you some code, I would like to um, tell you that uh, the most important library uh, for GraphQL in the JVM world is GraphQL Java. Uh, most of the libraries uh, that um, try and tries to uh, make it easier to use GraphQL in the JVM world are based on this library. So check it out, and there, is a, there are a lot of people contributing to this project, and it's always up, updated to the uh, latest uh, specification, that, so it's worth taking a, take a look. Okay, so it's time for code. Uh, so what I'm going to do um, right now? Well, I'm going to follow the steps I mentioned to you uh, before. Uh, so I'm going to execute a simple query using Groovy. And for that, I'm using GQL. Uh, what is GQL? Well, GQL is a DSL on top of GraphQL Java that make it easier uh, to, to execute uh, queries, uh, GraphQL queries. So, me GQL basic presentation mode. Okay, so because we are using Groovy, I'm just using a Groovy script. Can you see it? Yeah, I think so. Well, I'm going to. So as as we mentioned in the previous slides, we have first to define the data types. In this particular case, I'm going to define a contestant type in the DSL. Uh, sorry, type, type contestant, contestant, which has uh, two fields, the field name, which is of type GraphQL string, and the type age, which is going to be GraphQL float. Uh, why float? Well, we, you'll see in a moment. <laughs> Def, then we have to define the raffle type, uh, the raffle, which is raffle, and then the, the fields, in this particular case, the field title, uh, which is type GraphQL string, field uh, contestant, as you 
me sé cuántas tantas um, the DSL resolves all the methods and the types without importing anything and it's a statically type a list of contestants okay raffle and finally we have to define the schema okay the schema uh, DSL schema uh, because we don't have mutation we only have queries we are going to define uh, just one one query which is uh, winners uh, sorry uh, fill I have to Cheat a little bit. Yeah, the, qu the query should be named list. List. And this query is going to return a type of list of contestants. Okay, uh, it has an argument which is called max. Uh, yeah, I'm going to add an argument called max which is going to be of type GraphQL integer. And it's going to retrieve something. To retrieve something in GraphQL, you have to provide a function, something that is going to retrieve the data. In GraphQL Java terms, that is a data fetcher. Okay? Because we are using Ruby, we can, we can use an instance of that data fetcher or a closure. Um, for this example, I could end up writing something like this. Uh, but I have already done a function, this one, contestant, that is a data feature itself. So I can do a method reference, um, and that should be it. So if I execute this, I should be getting some data. There you go. So I have two results, Adam Donaki, which has with this, which is, uh, who is uh, 22.99, whatever does it mean, and um, Paul Bacon. Okay, so if I change the uh, maximum numbers, I should be getting different result. Um, what I wanted to show you in this example also is the validation error. So if we declare that this is a non-null argument, so it has to be provided no matter what, and I omit to provided and I execute it, I should be getting a validation error. There you go. So you can see I have no data, but instead I have a validation error. So uh, that is important. Okay, let's exit the presentation mode. Okay. So uh, that was a very simple example, but we are here because we are in the web world and we need to know how to expose our GraphQL schema through HTTP. Um, but what are the benefits of exposing the, uh, a GraphQL schema related to what we did uh, before with REST? Well, when we were using REST, uh, we will uh, see a schema like this one having uh, different resources uh, and the front-end developers uh, have to do several requests in order to gather the, the necessary data to render a given UI. So, uh, as I was mentioning, a front-end developer has to coordinate data for coming from different resources, meaning that he or she has to do several calls to different endpoints. Um, that's a lot of work and code. Moreover, uh, from a back-end perspective, for every new resource, you have to create a new controller or a new handler, depending on the framework you're using, for every new resource. Also, in the best case scenario, you will, be and you will end up implementing different data views for a given resource. And also, you have to take care of uh, the input formal validation. Um, Whereas in the uh, GraphQL world, um, well, that would be uh, roughly uh, the schema. Only one endpoint on the front end can just send wh uh, whatever the uh, queries that he or she wants and, and retrieve the uh, results altogether. So that uh, means a faster interaction with the front end. Queries and mutations can be batched, so instead of doing several requests, 
you can just batch them, send them all together, and get the result all together. You can also uh, custom the, the naming of the, uh, of the results. So the, uh, that is r more responsibility of the front-end developer. Um, something that I have already mentioned, queries can be executed in parallel which makes more efficient uh, the way we are retrieving the data. Uh, no more controllers or handlers every time we need to expose a new query. So we will be focusing from a uh, back-end developer point of view in the business logic instead of just exposing the endpoint. Uh, yes, and, and lastly, uh, the GraphQL engine takes care of input formal validation, things like I need to get um, an integer instead of a string, things like that or the one I have just so, showed you, um, I need to get this argument, otherwise it would throw a validation exception. Uh, so yeah, there are basically the, the benefits. So once we agree that it's better, uh, or at least for our use case is better, uh, how do we implement that with Ratpack? First of all, why Ratpack? Well, um, Ratpack is a very lightweight uh, framework. Well, it's more like a foundation rather than a, a framework. So it doesn't force you to, to uh, structure your application in, in, in a specific way, like a, normally a framework does. So you can choose how to structure your application and what other technologies are you going to add to your technology stack. Uh, it's also... Um, a technology that has a very good performance thanks to Nati and the Ratpack's execution model, which is important as we will see in, in a moment uh, to know or to be aware of this execution model. Okay, so how I'm going to expose a GraphQL schema using Ratpack? Well, I'm going to use GQL Ratpack, which is a module in the GQL project that is, uh, well, my experience using Ratpack and exposing GraphQL. I have open sourced it, um, and I have documented that is the uh, link to the documentation. Uh, what GQL Ratpack provides uh, to you? Well, it provides a GraphQL endpoint, uh, and it provides also a GraphQL console. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a GraphQL is. Uh, GraphQL is a very useful tool for, um, among other things, documenting your GraphQL application. Uh, it's a single page application built in React that is also useful for prototyping queries. So every time you are starting an application and you want to know how your queries look like or how um, they should look like, you can use GraphQL. Uh, it basically connects the, uh, the schema you are exposing to this tool, so you can play with it. Uh, there are other documentation alternatives. Um, I have added an article that talks a little bit about that, but uh, I'm not going to go any deeper on this. Okay, so let's see a little example on uh, how to do something with Ratpack. Uh, let's close this and open GQL Ratpack. Well, you can create a Ratpack application in many ways, but because we are using Groovy, we can just uh, create um, a Groovy script. Let me open. So this is a Groovy script. You can just do Groovy and the name of the script, and it will uh, bootstrap a Ratpack application. Uh, I'm just using the Ratpack, um, the Ratpack module with uh, Ratpack Groovy 151. And uh, instead of using the DSL for creating the types in this particular example, and I would say in most of the bigger uh, projects, I'm, I'm just uh, writing the schema in, uh, using the GraphQL syntax. Because normally, if you are working with a front-end developer, he may be more uh, aware of the GraphQL schema rather than your code or how you uh, define your data types with your code. So um, the GraphQL schema is the one I show you in the first uh, slides. Let me show you in here. Schema 
And there you go. So there is the, the schema. I have a type contestant, raffle, and the queries that I'm going to expose. So the only thing I need to do here is just to link the schema with the actual implementation of the services that are going to provide the data. So for that, I'm just saying that I'm going to map, map the type queries, specific, specifically uh, the query called, uh, I think it's winners, winners, exactly. Winners. Um, yeah, um, for that I can use uh, just a, a closure, but the same way I was uh, doing in the previous example, I already have the implementation for this. So once we have defined the schema, uh, which is um, shorter than the, the way I did before, um, I have to define where the, GraphQL, where the GraphQL schema is going to be exposed. In this particular case, I'm just saying that the GraphQL endpoint is going to be at GraphQL, the path GraphQL, and the GraphQL um, application is going to be at GraphQL slash browser, okay? The GraphQL module that the GQL Ratpack um, module provides just binds the schema we have defined with the GraphQL handler. So the GraphQL handler is aware of the schema. So nothing else. We can just um, run this. Fingers crossed. Okay. So if I open, uh, let me, there you go. So this is a, let me close this. This is graph, GraphQL. It basically has uh, two main areas, the one where you, do, you write your queries, the one with the results, and then you have a navigator to just query the, just to introspect, see the introspection of the, uh, the schema. So we can see all the queries that are defined, all the data types that are defined, um, and there is, it has also auto completion. So if we want to execute the winner's um, query, uh, it just gives us a hint of what are the arguments, and the other is number of winners too. And the fields that I want to retrieve well, there are name and age, so I only have to follow the auto-completion and then execute it. So I'm getting a different result every time I execute it. So, um, I mean, it's a really, really fast way of prototyping your application. Uh, the good thing about GraphQL is that um, you, can, you can start prototyping things. Um, for example, what I mean is, if there is this contestant query and I, don't, I still don't have the um, specific implementation, I can just say um, contestants, contestants, and then just uh, say, okay, I don't know what the real implementation is going to be, but I can just return a list of uh, name John and the age 22, for example. So that if I refresh this, I can try to execute the contestant um, query. And mm -hmm, something's wrong here. It's a list of, uh, oh, yeah. I have a typo, contestants. There you go. There you go. So it's, it's easier to start prototyping. So it, it has um, hot reloading. And uh, yeah, let's print the arguments. Um, because it's a statically type, it knows that this is a data fetching argument. Uh, let me put the whole signature so that you can know what I'm talking about. Uh, I can get the arguments. Okay, so if I execute this again, there you go. I have the argument there, so I can use it. 
or trace it or whatever I want. So this is our first example of Rat Pack. Um, okay. Uh, but when talking about Rat Pack and working with Rat Pack, it's important to know or to be aware of the execution model that it uses. Um, the Rat Pack execution model. Well, um, basically, uh, it's important because uh, Netty uh, kind of uh, is, is the technology that Ratpack is based about is based on. Uh, when you are executing something in 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 your in your handler, you must be aware if your operation is going to be blocking or not blocking. If it's blocking, like hitting I/O or hitting a JDBC uh, um, database, you must be using the blocking executor. Otherwise, we will be blocking the, the event loop, which is very bad for performance. So, yeah, you, you have to be aware of that. So, when using blocking operations, use the blocking executor. And when using not blocking uh, actions, you can use the, the event loop. Um, so, you have to respect that. Um, how, how can we do that? Well, um, the data fetchers, the, the services that we use to retrieve data, it can use completable future as a return type. Um, so, completable futures can choose which executor to use when, uh, when executing them. So, um, you have to choose whatever, uh, sorry, you have to choose which ex executor uh, you want to use depending on it, the op whether the operation is blocking or not. Yeah, that's wh uh, what I wanted to say. Um, in order to do that, you can use it just a plain raw uh, code, like doing completable supply async and then providing the executor, or create your own abstractions. Uh, GQL Ratpack provides those abstractions uh, for you in order just not to repeat and create boilerplate code. Uh, this is an example. Uh, we will see another one in a bit. But basically, this is a data fetcher, uh, a function that will be uh, used as a data fetcher, which returns a completable feature of a list of maps. Uh, well, this line will be executed in a non blocking executor, and this repository list, which hits a relational database, will be using uh, the blocking executor. So that would respect the uh, Ratpack execution model. Okay, um, that is okay, but uh, your applications always have to deal with with errors. So how can we deal with errors in Ratpack and GraphQL? Well, um, a little bit of retrospective: when we were using REST, uh, normally we, we we were using HTTP codes and and error messages altogether. Uh, but in GraphQL, it's more likely to be using rich messages, okay? Uh, so instead of using HTTP codes, whatever you want to uh, tell your client, just add it to uh, the GraphQL uh, messages. Uh, there is also a very important difference between errors and exceptions. Uh, errors are uh, handled using the GraphQL error type, which basically should be used to have more meaningful error data to the client. Um, if you want to uh, um, return more data for developers, uh, maybe you want to use uh, GraphQL exceptions. But, well, this is how an, an error looks like. Basically, you have uh, the type of uh, error, yeah, uh, and you can use extensions. Extensions are very useful because you don't want to uh, stick only what a GraphQL Java is going to give you. Maybe you want to add some uh, internationalization and things like that. You can use extensions to these messages. That is the way of extending the, the GraphQL error messages. Uh, the exception, as I, as I told you, uh, adds more information about what happened. It's well, like the stack trace and things like that. This is important to keep it in mind because um, Throwing an exception in JVM is, 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 is expensive, or at least it's more expensive than returning an error, which is just um, a simple data structure. 
So um, in order to implement this properly, you need to be aware of instrumentation. But what are instrumentations? Well, instrumentations are just middleware executed before or after fields and data fetchers in GraphQL. Um, they are mostly used for things like error handling, security tracing, and many, many things. It basically um, can modify the behavior of the execution flow and it can be changed. Well, what does it mean? Well, that means that in a schema like this, uh, this is a theoretical uh, scenario. If we have three instrumentations, the first one is going to instrument the fields, then the data features, and lastly, the results. And then the second instrumentation will take over, and so on and so forth, until the last one. A very good example of using instrumentation is security. Um, it's, it's good to mention at this point that, uh, again, that GraphQL is a query language. Uh, it knows nothing about security mechanisms. So we have to make the engine, the GraphQL engine that we are using in our applications, aware of the security stuff. Uh, it is normally tackled using the concept of context. What is a context? Well, the context is something that carries information from outside the GraphQL um, engine uh, to the GraphQL execution flow. Things like uh, the user that is uh, authenticated uh, is passed to the, GraphQL, um, to the GraphQL execution flow through the context. Uh, it can be any type of data structure. In the GraphQL Java library, it's just uh, an object. It could be anything. That enables uh, framework uh, users to integrate the GraphQL uh, engine with whatever the framework you want to use. And the context is available through all the execution flow. Um, that means instrumentation and data features. That is very useful because you can, in, uh, you can get the information from that context from the, uh, to the, from the instrumentation and also from the data features. Uh, for the security stuff, my experience uh, has led me to uh, thinking about two strategies. The first one, just um, implementing the security just using instrumentations. Uh, well, uh, the main ideas behind that are that it gives you more control so you can, um, you can be very precise on how the uh, um, authentication and authorization is going to affect your application. But in the case of RATPAC, it's harder to integrate with RATPAC execution model because the, your, um, your GraphQL um, engine doesn't know anything about RATPAC. Um, on the other hand, uh, you can use REST for authenticating uh, your user and then using an instrumentation for authorization. So once we know the user that has been logged in, uh, we can just create an instrumentation to say, okay, this user is allowed to this query or this other query is not allowed. Uh, and it's also nice because then you can use things that we already uh, use like PAC4J in the case of RATPAC, and it's easier to integrate with RATPAC execution time because there is a pack 4 j integration in RATPAC, I can use that and then pass the user to the uh, GraphQL engine. Uh, and that's the, that's the case for JQL RATPAC. Uh, there is a GraphQL handler that is aware, for, um, is aware of both the schema and the pack 4 j uh, authentication. So in my, both in my instrumentations and in my data features, I can get the data from the user profile that has been logged in. Okay, so let's see a little bit of code on this. Uh, first of all, close this one. Okay. So I have this project. Uh, first, let me show you 
how okay so this is the uh, rat pack entry point so uh, like we had before we have the graphql handler and the graphql handler but in this case this graphql handler is aware of the pack 4 j uh, integration instead of using gql rat pack graphql handler we use the one below the pack 4 j uh, package so then we, we are up to use the um, Pack4j thing. So in this particular case, for all the handlers, I have enabled the a specific authentication client. In this case, it's a basic auth. Uh, so when I start the application, it will prompt uh, uh, to introduce the username and the, and the password. And in order to validate and get the data from that user, I have implemented a, um, just a dummy a dummy service that basically takes whatever I have introduced in the username and password and creates a profile that I can be used through my application. Okay, mm, I think there's nothing else to comment here. Well, yeah, of course, I have declared that way of uh, authenticating. I can just stack many, many others like uh, Google authentication, Twitter authentication, I think like that. Uh, and only when I'm doing this, I'm just saying for everything that is under the GraphQL path, I'm going to be use the authentication method that I have defined uh, with this type. So basically I'm using for GraphQL handler and GraphQL handler, this authentication. Okay, so let's, yes. Um, okay. So uh, an example of uh, the uh, instrumentation. In this uh, this instrumentation, what it does is uh, well. First of all, let me show you the the nicer part. Basically, I have created an instrumentation to um, filter which, uh, which uh, queries and, and mutations are allowed for a given role. So uh, let's say, um, of course, for the login, everybody is allowed to, to try to, to hit it. But for the random cookie and the create cookie, only logged users are allowed. Okay. So the implementation, basically, which is this one, I'm going to show the, the the most important part. Basically, what I was telling you in the slides, um, through the params dot environment, I'm able to get the GraphQL context. And in, in the case of GQL Ratpack integration, the context is a Ratpack context. So the, that enables me to get anything from Ratpack. So if I want to get the user profile, like you will see uh, in a moment, uh, that returns um, the user profile. User profile. I'm sorry. User. Ah. User profile. Okay. So wherever it's in the context, uh, it's enabled through the um, the GraphQL um, engine. So in this case, I'm just getting the user profile. Use a, a given service to uh, to check if that user is allowed or not, and then return the data fetcher that it was going to be executed if the, um, if the user is allowed or get an error in case it's not allowed. Okay, um, that is how it looks like in an instrumentation. How it looks like in a data fetcher? Okay, let me show you. Um, cookies, service. Okay, in a data fetcher, because uh, we can get the same way the context, I'm, I'm, just, just, I'm just doing the same thing. Once I get the context and I know uh, what type the context is, I can just start using it. Okay, in this case, I'm doing the same, but not for authentication reason, just for tracing. And I'm tracing that the username that is going to create a new cookie is whoever it is. Okay, so uh, let's execute the application just to see how uh, it behaves. Okay. 
Okay. So, yeah. Well, I must be logged in already. Uh, Mm -hmm. Demo time. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah, sorry. I was uh, I was executing the same <laughs> the same example that before. This is the real thing. I was wondering why it didn't prompt me with the username and password. Okay. There we go. There you go. So I can use whatever uh, rest of authentication I want. In this case, my name. And then I'm accessing both the GraphQL schema and the uh, GraphQL, GraphQL uh, endpoint. So the same way, I have here the available mutations and the queries, and I can use them. So. For example, I'm going to execute a given uh, mutation just to see a couple of things. Mutation, mutation, and here create cookie. And the create cookie, create cookie needs a cookie input. Cookie input, yes, input, cookie input which is mandatory. I'm going to use it there. I would like to get the author and the text. So in order to create the input, uh, it doesn't matter, John and the text. Great, conf is cool. So if I execute this, I have created the cookie and if everything went okay, I can see the log here, and I can see a couple of things. First of all, that I, I was able to get information from the user that is logged in, and second, the thing I, I mentioned about the um, execution model. Um, this part, let me close this. Um, this part of the, of the uh, data fetcher was using the non-blocking execution, uh, no blocking executor, uh, whereas the, this part of the, of the code that was hitting a JDBC uh, database is using the blocking executor. That, that, is, that is important. So uh, I don't know if you have any questions on this part. No? Okay, so I think this is pretty much a security example. So let's continue a little bit. So there are many other things in, important that uh, has, to be, it has uh, to be mentioned, but uh, there is no uh, more time to, to comment. Things like um, how to implement the scholars or, or or many, uh, like subscri subscriptions in GraphQL, there are many, many other things. Uh, but um, I think it's worth mentioning a couple of, of more things before uh, we go. Um, first is Relay. Relay is uh, GraphQL good practices. There are a lot of uh, documentation and articles on that. So if you are building a big application, it worth taking a look. It doesn't mean that you have to be uh, forced to use these good practices because uh, GraphQL enables you to uh, structure your application in the way you want, but it's, it's worth uh, taking a look. Also, what are uh, other alternatives to Rathpack and GQL? Well, you can use GORM GraphQL uh, with or without Grails or maybe Micronaut. 
is just a, a way of uh, exposing a given data stores using GORM and exposing it as a um, GraphQL uh, schema. That is the uh, link to it. Uh, of course, you can use GraphQL Java, uh, plain GraphQL Java, do it yourself. Uh, it's becoming easier to use it because uh, they are trying to make the API easier for any, any developer. So maybe uh, GQL or uh, GORM GraphQL doesn't fit your requirements, you can use your, your own implementation. So we are, we are getting to the end, and for me, the most important thing that you can take away from this talk is that GraphQL is, is great, especially for a given a scenario such as uh, interaction with uh, the front-end developers, but it's not a silver bullet. Uh, but definitely it's an improvement between the uh, interaction between the back-end developers and the front-end developers. Um, also, that GraphQL is not limited to HTTP, as uh, I have just showed you. Uh, Graph, uh, GraphQL GORM is an example of just using GraphQL to do uh, queries using GORM. Um, and I think it's still uh, underestimated as a query language, because everybody is trying to get rid of REST and starting GraphQL without noticing if this is uh, the right thing to do for a given scenario. Well, that's pretty much it. If anyone has any questions, uh, yeah? Uh, no, uh, not yet, because uh, at the moment I'm just uh, getting all the data I'm, I'm, I'm getting for a, a production project that uh, we are working. We are working with uh, Python. I couldn't use uh, Groovy or Java in that specific project, but things that we have learned, uh, I, I have migrated it using GraphQL Java and, and the DSL I have created with GQL. Uh, there's still one issue I, I have to tackle. Uh, basically, the GraphQL Java implementation, what it does is that you create the schema, and then you create an instance called Graph, GraphQL, and that is what you expose. That means that you don't have to create the schema. Uh, well, you create the schema once, then the GraphQL, and the, the GraphQL is just a single time. You use it as many times as you want for any given request. The problem uh, at the moment is that I'm creating the GraphQL instance for every request, so that is a minor issue. I will probably um, tackle that issue in the, in the next, uh, in the next in few days. Uh, so once that is tackled, yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah, the GraphQL engine. Yeah, good questions. Um, uh, the GraphQL engine uh, is the implementation that exposes the GraphQL schema. In the examples we are, I have uh, showed you during the presentation, is once you, you get an instance of a schema uh, and you get this instance that I have just uh, tell him, the GraphQL instance, you can, you can um, that instance is the GraphQL engine, is the implementation, is the instance alive that receives requests uh, to, um, to receive queries and to respond with, um, with the responses. We get that and expose, uh, expose that engine uh, through HTTP in Radpack or in Micronaut or things like that. But you can use that implementation to execute queries uh, without any other HTTP endpoint. Where, where do I st uh, store the data? You can use whatever data store you want. Uh, just be very quick because I think we are running out of time. Um, uh, let me check, for example, this. I think this is a very good example uh, in the equal <coughs> graph. Okay. So this is uh, when a when a new request comes uh, to uh, to the uh, to the uh, engine, it will enter this function. Okay. So if you want to uh, retrieve data from a JDBC a relational database, 
you will do the, the thing here and the IDVC. Yeah, for example, in this, in this example, the get winners, uh, let me show you very brief, briefly. Uh, I'm just getting the data from a C CSV file, just a CSV file. So you can get data from anything you want. I think we have run out of time, so thank you very much. I will be uh, around just to, uh, in case you have more questions. Thank you.